Hello there. Um, in this video, I want to go through some facts about the spherical Earth, and I want to go through some reasons why the Earth cannot possibly be flat and must be a sphere. Because this flat Earth thing is just getting absolutely ridiculous at the moment. Well, on YouTube it is anyway. I mean, exactly how big it is in the world, in the real world, it's hard to say, but it seems like a huge thing on YouTube at the moment. And the amount of people that are saying this is just getting beyond a joke. When there really isn't anything to debate, the Earth is a sphere. If you look at the facts, there is no other reasonable conclusion. Of course, looking at facts isn't exactly a strong point for the average flat earth proponent, but well anyway, let's let's start thinking about this. So you can see on Google Earth here I've got the we're looking at the Earth as it actually is. Uh, at the moment we're pretty we're only about two weeks after the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. So the sun is still pretty much quite close to the Tropic of uh, Cancer, which we can see here in this image here. So you can see that this is the tropical cancer here. As you can probably guess from my accent, I'm Scottish, so I'm up here at the moment. And so the sun, for me at the moment, is sort of circling around here. Oh, sorry. And it's sort of coming right around the, the other side of the North Pole and then coming on, on south of me. And I would expect that the sun would rise and set in a northerly direction, which it does at this time of year. In fact, at this time of year in Scotland, the sky doesn't even really get completely dark. It's really nice. But the sun definitely comes from the north and sets in the north, and which is entirely consistent with what we'd expect. It's called sun calc. There it is. Dot net. Now, in this website, you can actually go to anywhere on Earth at any time of the year and find out where the sun rises and sets. And you can see that while I'm here in Scotland, it's telling me that on the 6th of July today, the sun should come from this direction, this kind of light orange line, and it will set on the dark orange line up here, which isn't exactly what you'd expect. Now, if we can go to any time of the year, so let's go to the next equinox. Which is about, it's the 23rd. Now in an equinox, I've already done a video about this, the sun rises and sets, it rises east, sets west, everywhere on earth. And I've already gone into a video why that's, the only feasible explanation for that is that we're on a globe. Now, the, now in an equinox, the sun's following the equator, which is this line here. So if we look at it here, let me go back, so kind of just cuts through this bit of Africa here, so let's have a look. So it's kind of coming across here. And the sun, the reason it sets, the reason it's, it rises in the east, sets west, and you, get, and you also get 12 hours of sunlight, is because the sun is hitting the earth exactly on the equator, so that the axis that the Earth is turning on isn't tilted towards or away from the Sun at that point. And this is why we get this symmetry. Now, as we move on, let's go back to this, sorry, go back to this. We can go to um, December and let's go to the, see the equinox, sorry, the solstice. Now, this here it's telling you that the sun would rise and set in a southerly direction in the, summer, in the southern hemisphere at this time of year. In fact, where I am there at the moment, that's right on the Tropic of Capricorn, because you can see that the sun starts here, it goes directly overhead at midday and then sets in a southerly southwest direction. So it rises in the southeast, not quite as far as southeast but in a, a southeast direction and it sets in a southwest direction. Well, let's consider this from the perspective of a flat earth. Well, 
a current of flat earth, the sun's moving around here, like this. So, if you were in Australia on, in December, you should expect the sun to rise from the north, not the south. But if we consider this from the perspective of the globe, from a spherical earth, this makes perfect sense. So if you're about here, say you're right on the tropical Capricorn and it's December, so the sun's kind of circling around here, going right around to the other side of the Antarctica and coming back. So you're sort of seeing it coming up here and it's, you expect to see it rising from the southwest, southeast, sorry, and then it would go right over your head and then it would go down here and you'd expect to see it setting in the southwest. The complete opposite of what you expect on a flat earth map. And you can go to this website here and it does, it does tell you exactly where the sun will rise and set anywhere on earth on any day. Now, as I've mentioned before, flat earthers have got a remarkable ability to just deny facts. They'll tell you that you can't visit Antarctica, which is nonsense, you can visit Antarctica. But what are they going to say in the face of this? What, that there's a conspiracy stop and you going to Australia? You can go to Australia, you could phone someone in Australia and ask them in December, what, where did the sun rise and where did it set? This is just unavoidable. This is one of those facts that is just impossible on a, on a flat earth and is explained perfectly by the Earth being a sphere. In fact, there really isn't any other explanation for these facts in the Earth as a sphere. If you consider, if you consider the, the, over a whole year, the way that the sun, the direction the sun sets, sun rises and the sun sets, different latitudes over the course of a whole year, you put all that together, the only feasible explanation is that Earth is a sphere. There is no other explanation. Okay? If you look at this, everywhere in December the sun rises from the, the south, sets in the south. You go to June, And it's the opposite. The sun rises in the north and sets in the north. Now, the fact that there's also this north-south symmetry in the world, again, that destroys any notion that the Earth is flat, because you wouldn't expect there to be any kind of symmetry in this model from the north and the south. So all you've got to do is consider what the sun is doing. And it will tell you that the Earth must be a sphere. It's impossible. There is no other explanation. Also, let's consider something else. Now, we'll look at this video here. It's a, it's a time lapse of the sun. I'll go right to the beginning. Let's just watch this. Now, there are two really important features about this. One is, the sun is the exact same size throughout the whole video. Now, we're told by flat earthers that the sun setting is a perspective effect. It's because the sun is moving away from you, that the sun is about 3,000 miles overhead and it's moving away from you. Well, if it was doing that, it would start to look smaller as it moved away. Also, the speed that was moving at would be much slower when it was near the horizon than when it was overhead. But you can see the sun is moving with a constant speed. Now this suggests, overwhelmingly, that the, the motion of the sun is due to a rotation. Either the observer is rotating or the sun is moving in a giant circle around the observer. It's the only feasible geometric interpretation for what you're looking at here. I mean, if the sun was 3,000 miles overhead, 
I mean, it's, I'd say estimate in this video, the sun's at, you know, no, doesn't start any higher than an angle of elevation, about five degrees. So if the sun was 3,000 miles overhead, at the start of this video, it would have to be about 34,000 miles away. And there's nowhere on Earth that's more than, no two places on Earth are more than about 12,000 miles apart. It's absurd. The idea that what you're seeing here is due to perspective is absurd. It's insanity to even suggest it. This is due to rotation. And if you combine it with the fact that the sun is the same size everywhere on Earth, the only conclusion is the sun is a long way away. If the sun's a long way away, all the sun, all the light from it is parallel. But this, the angle that this, the sun appears in the sky changes as you move across the Earth. The only explanation for that is that the Earth is a sphere. You combine that with other information like the fact that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west everywhere on earth on an equinox. All the other information about the way the sun rises and sets, the fact it rises in the south and sets in the south in December in the southern hemisphere. The idea that, you, that the sun, that the earth could be flat is, is just ridiculous. The only model that accounts for all that information is the fact is that Earth is a sphere. It is the only feasible, reasonable explanation. I don't really know how much more to say about this. There really isn't much more to say. And there's, there's other points to bring up. There's the circumpolar stars. I mean, that's been dealt with by um, some people on YouTube already. The fact that there are circumpolar stars above the southern, above the the south pole. Again, that, it's a it's a fact, which in itself makes flat Earth impossible. The fact that in the southern hemisphere, in the Antarctica, you get twenty four hours of daylight in the in the summer, in December. Again. Consider that in the, from the perspective of a flat Earth. So if the sun's over here, say just around about Australia, how could it be visible over here, but not be visible here? It's just impossible. But you look at it from the perspective of the Earth being a sphere, and it makes perfect sense. Okay, the idea that the Earth is flat is insane. Okay, it is total insanity. There's no other way of describing it. You consider the facts the Earth is a sphere. It's an unavoidable conclusion from everything that we know about the way the sun moves, the way the stars move. The fact that the angle of incidence of sunlight changes as you move across the Earth. There isn't any other feasible conclusion to reach. Combine that with, the, again, like I said, the circumpolar stars. Um, there isn't a debate here. There is no debate. There are just facts and people pretending that they're not true. Or not being able, or not accepting the implication of those facts. It's a, the case closed, the earth is a sphere.